Linda Mulshine with Mark Lawrence, who is the genius legend who's been here with many, many different companies, am I right? A few. A few different <laughs> companies, and he is the contracts, content, and finance genius legend. <laughs> and uh, so tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself, Mark. Uh, okay, uh, I've been working in media since I was about basically 25 years old. My background is that I qualified as an accountant. I didn't really understand or want to go into TV in the first place, so I sort of drifted into it uh, through a finance route, uh, but quite quickly uh, realised that I actually did have a bit of a flair for content, did recognise it, but also understood what people watched and watched TV as well. Um, uh, uh, so that was, I, I got a job with ITV in the UK um, and I used to buy for Granada and London Weekend Television. Uh, uh, so I, I spent my first 16 years with ITV. After that I moved on to Granada Sky Broadcasting which was a, a, a pay channel in the UK. And after that I then moved to uh, Hallmark Channels uh, and bought on a, a pan-global basis for all the Hallmark Channels across the globe, uh, which also then got bought and it became NBC Universal and my last role as a buyer was Director of Global Acquisitions for NBC Universal, where I not only did uh, 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 semi-global deals for multiple channels across the globe, but also got involved in terms of uh, production and uh, commissioning of dramas for the channels and owning our own IP. So we were ahead of the game all those years ago. Um, I've been at Endemol Shine uh, now for just over six years and I'm executive director of Europe looking after the European sales team. Wow, that's incredible. There you go. Incredible resume. And I'm only 28. <laughs> Now, your first MIP, were you a buyer or a seller? I was a buyer in 1989. Uh, I came down to MIPCOM, which was very, very different to what it is now because it was basically uh, just the bunker downstairs, which was, which is a bit like a cellar, there's no windows, it's dark, and people used to smoke down there as well. Um, so it was quite horrendous. Um, however, when I came with ITV, uh, because we were part of it effectively like a syndication, uh, I was here with uh, several of the buyers who have gone on to achieve great things, uh, such as like Jeff Ward, uh, who's at Fox. Um, and we used to grew, uh, view as a group in a, in a horrible, smoky room uh, and make decisions en masse. But, as a, uh, but the first market is always awe inspiring. The first thing is A, it's being in France, it's a different territory. It's meeting lots of people in a very short space of time and it involves lots of kissing, uh, uh, which uh, um, uh, coming from a very sort of stiff upper lip Britain is quite odd, but now it comes quite naturally. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you would have done differently at your first MIP now that you look back on it all? Um, no, because uh, I, we were very much organised as a group. However, uh, that did change after about three years of coming because. We, we, we decided that sitting in one room and distributors coming to us to pitch was the wrong way. We got out and about and uh, spread our, 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 our tentacles much wider to try and find because otherwise we weren't seeing all the product. There's so many people here. So that bit was done differently. Would I do anything else differently? No, because I think I was quite sensible because I am a bit boring anyway and sensible in, in the way that I approach things. So I didn't go out drinking till four o'clock in the morning because that's not the way to do it. Uh, um, um, but preparation is incredibly important to this month. Okay, I think that leads to the next question yeah. is what is the most uh, vital preparation habits that you do before you come to each market? Having an agenda and a diary and having all your partners books. If you think you can come down here and see somebody, I spec by turning up at the uh, front desk of any stand, you are completely wrong. That doesn't work that way at all. Uh, you must have it structured, you need to know where you are. Uh, I think that you also need to start early as well, so you need to start at 9am, not 11, because you've been out drinking till 5 o'clock in the morning. Also, please don't go drinking till 5 o'clock in the morning, because if you come up to my stands thinking of alcohol and you're still pretty drunk from the night before, it's not a great impression. Um, uh, I would also say the other thing is as well, do dress to impress. Don't turn up in ripped jeans and a t-shirt because actually that doesn't convey uh, a very good I image. Um, I personally, like all my guys on the stand here, um, to wear ties. Mm -hmm. um, they don't in the office at home, but they do here at the markets because it creates a, a, 
a, a business attitude and you look the part. So I think absolutely pre preparation. And in terms of preparation, when you're trying to get appointments, make sure that you target properly and have a little look because don't go and come to Endemol. Uh, I had an appointment this week, for example, where somebody came and had an appointment. And I said, what are you looking for? She said, children's animation for uh, preschool. I don't do that. Well, what else have you got? I said, I haven't got anything else. That's all I've got. Mm -hmm. So there's no preparation done on that at all. Wasted yeah. her time, wasted mine. Yeah. So the last question is, uh, obviously organizing these meetings mm -hmm. at MIP are, are very important. And there's yeah. the database plays a huge part in that in regards to emailing and getting those appointments. Now, what are some things that stand out in an email positively and negatively? Oh, now I see, uh, on, in terms of the database, <laughs> I have a slight problem with the database. Yeah. Uh, great, it's a good place to, uh, uh, to pick up, um, uh, to pick up uh, contact, uh, telephone numbers and email addresses. I don't book appointments through the MIPCOM mm -hmm. database. Uh, because it doesn't really work for me because again people will contact me that don't really know what I do or, or they're trying to do something that I'm not the right person for. Um, what you should do is uh, uh, do get the contacts, um, uh, do do the research, don't rely on emails, pick up the phone because uh, uh, and I say this as an old Heart, uh, that people, young people such as yourself, <laughs> don't use the phone anymore. You know, you have to text, uh, uh, you know, you have to email, pick up the phone. Because the best form of communication in these meetings is face to face, mm -hmm. followed by the phone, followed by email. Don't text me asking for an appointment because that's really rude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, the answer is do pick up the phone. Because also, we get hundreds of emails. I probably get 300 emails a day. Mm -hmm. So if you send me an email, whilst you might be very nice and you might be, it might be worth seeing you, you might probably just go further and further down and you're not going to necessarily hit my diary space. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you pick me up and go, oh, well I've got this great, oh, that sounds really interesting. Well look, I could put you in at 5.30 on Tuesday. Well, that's gonna work. So that's the biggest tip. Okay. For goodness sake, pick the phone up. We've all got a mobile phone. Use it and speak into it rather than text it. Yeah. Fantastic piece of advice. Now, yeah. is there anything else that you want to add to any of that? No, uh, I think that look, it's really exciting. Um, uh, and I don't want to sound like a real stick in the mud because I've done it and been it. Yeah, if you want to go out drinking and socialising, it's great because you can meet lots of people. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to meet the best contacts in the bar uh, 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 at the Grand at 2 o'clock in the morning? No, you're not. Are you going to have a good time at 2 o'clock in the morning? Yes, you are. Uh, um, but, and I'm not saying don't do it because we've all done it. Uh, but what I'm saying is just be really careful. It costs quite a lot of money to come here. It's expensive and it's valuable time. Uh, so, you know, just make sure that you balance the social bit. Uh, make sure that you dress properly. Make sure that you're organized. Just don't come down here on spec expecting it to all happen and people will meet to you and you haven't done an appointment. Okay, Mark, so looking at your stand, it's obviously quite expensive to have a stand like this. So can you talk to me a bit about that? Uh, well, I, I think it's expensive for everybody to come down here, not, not just Endemol, but also the smaller uh, distributors as well. Uh, 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 and I have a very good friend who, who runs a small size distribution company who started out on his own. And we kind of worked out with all the um, travelling costs, uh, uh, the subsistence costs looking after your staff down here, the stand, the catering, the entertaining of the clients. Um, the actual cost per half hour meeting as a, a, as a fag packet calculation we reckon was around about somewhere between 500 pounds slope slash euros so it is important so if somebody doesn't turn on that is really money wasted it, 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 you can't afford not to do it and that's why it's so important to understand don't waste people's time but also bear in mind that they spent a lot of money just to be sitting here to talk to you it is important it's money business so there you have it everybody Dress to impress, yep. don't stay out too late, and pick up the phone. <laughs> and enjoy it. And enjoy your time here. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today and all of your advice has been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.